Whoa! I am so excited to announce Fabric Premium per user. <laughs> or that's what I'd like to be announcing. Instead, I've got to direct you to a link to vote for this premium functionality, which is just the silliest thing in the world. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how, like, Power BI Premium per user should just be Fabric Premium per user. <laughs> Let's get into it. I can't wait to talk to you about it. All right, do the whole YouTube thing. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. You want early access to all these amazing videos. <laughs> become a member. For as little as $5 a month, you can become a member. You get early access to all this content. Uh, don't worry, though. Nothing's behind a paywall. So, you know, you'll all these videos will eventually get out to everybody. So, um, But if you like to support the channel and you want to see this stuff early, uh, become a member. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to work on some other, like, member things and whatnot. Uh, but uh, let's dive into it, okay? So what are we talking about here? So right here, I've, I've kind of got... Uh, I've, I've got the licensing grid of what you get with the free account, Power BI Pro, Premium Per User, and Power BI Embedded, okay? So let's re re recap this. What do you get with free? Well, you can create reports to Power BI Desktop, and with the, you can share desktop files, right? So if you don't want to use the service at all, you just want people opening up Power BI Desktop files, you can totally do this for free. Like, you don't have to pay a nickel, right? Um now, most people, you know, the biggest thing is the Power BI service. So uh, that's where we start to get into like, okay, be able to publish reports and share and collaborate. Well, that gets into our, our Power BI Pro space, right? So that's that's going to cost you $10 a month to do this, okay? Note, uh, this is going to become uh, $14 a month. Uh, that becomes $14 a month in, on April 1st, 2024. So, like, note that that's about to change, okay? All right. But with Power BI Pro, you do not get things like advanced AI. You don't get that. You don't get the advanced data flows, which allows for advanced transformations, additional memory and compute is necessary for that. You don't get the, uh, you know, data marts, you know, with Power BI Pro, you don't get that basically a SQL database to store and manage your stuff. Uh, you do not get uh, at the XML endpoints. What the heck is an XML endpoint? That sounds like, uh, uh, I don't know, some sort of like, uh, like, Airport stop. That's not what in uh, XMLA. You don't fly into XMLA. Um, uh, XMLA is is how you can manage your semantic models. Uh, it's an technically, I think it's an open source format, uh, but and you know it it's allows you to manage your models with code. Something pro developers really need. Um, uh, yeah, so those things are missing. Obviously, uh, you know people. It, uh, you know, you, you don't get free access to stuff with there, uh, and you don't have access to Fabric or Copilot and Fabric, all of that stuff. You don't get any of that with just Pro. With Power BI Premium per user, you get a whole bunch of more stuff. This, too, for $20 a month, this is also going over to the uh, $14 a month, so um, or going up by $4, so this is going to go to $24 a month, so just be aware of that. I got another video that was just released that outlines all the ins and outs of that, and maybe you're not gonna pay additional money. So check out that video to learn how not to pay the additional $4 a month. Um, it's kind of a, a good deal. But with Power BI Premium per user, let's talk about why, why do people have access to that? Because um, a lot of the big core functionality that you gain with Power BI Premium per user, per user, i.e. the advanced AI. This is data science workloads, right? You want to have those data science workloads. Uh, you could do it on a premium capacity, or if you're a smaller organization, you can't afford a premium capacity because premium capacities start at $5,000 a pop. Um, the premium per user was a good bet for you. Also allowed you to get access to advanced data flows, uh, you'd get all these data marts and the XMLA endpoints uh, for your user shop. And as well as, oh, it doesn't even list it here. Is it not? Where did it go? Oh, yeah. And look at the, this is a big one. Model memory size limit and refresh rate for Power BI data sets. On Power BI Pro, 
the memory size is one gig. You can only have one gigabyte, and you only get to have uh, uh, eight gigs of data updated a day. Now, this native storage thing is really weird. It's eight gigabytes of license. I don't really know. I've seen the calculation on this. I don't think it actually works. So, uh, But that's a whole different topic. When we look over at the, the premium per user, the, this is a big one why people get it. Um, is it. It supports model sizes up to 100 gigabytes in size and allows you to do 48 refreshes a day uh, and have 100 terabytes of storage out there, okay? Uh, this is kind of a big deal, right? Like 100 terabytes, if you if you go and you try to purchase 100 terabytes of Power BI premium capacity, you're going to spend, because um, it uh, capacity is double in size. So a P1, which is $5,000 a month, is uh, 25 gigabytes. A P2 or an F64 is 25 gigabytes, an F128 is 50 gigabytes, and an uh, F256, let's see here, is $20,000 a month. So it goes 5, 10, 20, yeah, 20K a month for that 100 gigabytes of capacity. You can fit a mighty lot, an awful lot of premium per users inside that 20K to, you know, in order to get that size capacity, right? So this is uh, basically the premium per user uh, plan and like what you get with it is basically you get a whole bunch of additional compute and a whole bunch of additional memory to run your analytics in your organization. And all you have to do is get licenses for your end users, all right? Now, that's what premium per user is, right? Whole bunch of new compute, uh, you know, hold up bunch of additional capacities and a whole bunch of additional memory, right? You charge more because uh, it, you know, you're using additional resources and uh, it's something that, you know, as an organization, small organizations were finding, they couldn't afford that $20,000 a month. So they, they just weren't spending it. They weren't doing these things. And a lot of it was they couldn't manage it, right? They couldn't manage that size of a resource and capability, all right? A lot of that stuff should apply to a fabric premium per user too. Plus, like we're, we're talking about small companies who don't have a whole bunch of team members to run around, manage capacities, manage services, manage, uh, you know, things spinning up, spinning down, managing overloads, managing all that stuff. Do the, like fabric premium per user should be doing the exact same thing that premium per user does with those AI workloads and with those advanced data flows, but open it up to allow these fabric workflows and fabric AI and, and the, the all the fabric components to run on that to do the same thing, right? I'm not saying expand any of the compute Right, so you still have the full, you know, the compute that you have for premium per user. You still have the memory that is available in premium per user. You, you, you know, there's just you just now have more options to run it, and it becomes much easier to to run and, and operate because, especially if you're a small company, premium per user becomes a a, a no brainer add on. Right, throw in okay, like charge them for storage. Okay, fine. You know, that's something you got to do. I think there's some like legal contractual stuff that they couldn't get out of. So like, whatever, charge them for storage, make them get a storage account, charge them for that, but allow them to run all these different fabric workloads with premium uh, per user. Uh, it's just so that people can use this stuff. Cause frankly, fundamentally what fabric is, is it's taking the, the, uh, the Unix operating system that was that Power BI has run, been running on for like forever, right? That dynamic operating system that allows for scale, that allows for hot swapping memory, that allows for managing user content. And it just, Fabric just runs additional uh, like services on top of that compute. Do the same thing with premium per user or Fabric premium per user. Like it, this, just open it up. Just call it a day, right? We've seen what the adoption is like. People like it. There's going to still be reason for premium capacities. Premium per user is not going to overcome everything. In fact, I can guarantee you what this is going. What what 
fabric premium per user is going to mean for small companies is that they can start to work and do things in fabric and it's going to become uh, something that's usable for them that they would struggle to justify elsewise. It's also going to bring bigger companies in for that self-service data engineer. That's that's or the citizen data engineer, citizen data scientist, citizen analyst, right? You're going to be able to, they're going to be able to stick them on premium per user, that fabric premium per user uh, license so that they don't have to worry about managing those rogue elements that would exist inside a business that might like spin up some tool to like hit their model of 10,000 times a day, right? Like companies don't want to be managing like that quote unquote bad, bad actor. Um, allow the service to do it. The service has been great at that, right? This, this shouldn't, this isn't going to take any additional compute. It's not going to take any additional memory. Uh, like this is not going to cost Microsoft anything additional other than opening up these workloads onto these capacities and, and expanding the monitoring and the flexing that they currently do with premium per user to include these additional workloads. I mean, straight up, this makes perfect sense that, Fabric premium per user comes out and it's the same cost. Now there's a link down below and, uh, cause I'm a horrible YouTuber. Apparently I forgot to, to pull up the, the, the link to where we can go vote up this idea. Uh, so I can't pull it up right now and show it to you. Cause you know how I do it. No edits. We're just going straight on this stuff. Um, please go out there, vote this up. Uh, we need to get fabric premium per user, a real thing. And I want to do a real announcement video and I want to get that out there at some point in time that this, so that this just isn't, a uh, just me talking, basically trying to build the case for fabric premium per user. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Uh, I know this is a little bit like of a Chris rant, um, but I think it's an important thing that'd be useful for us and for everyone. So I appreciate you taking the time to sit and talk with me today as we went, went into it and talked through all this stuff. You have the best day ever. Peace. All right. And I, I know I get it. This stuff is more than just a little complex, right? Um, if you need help, head over to bakertilly.com slash digital, uh, click on the like get help or more information button, fill out the form myself or my coworkers will reach out. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure you get some help. But if you think you can do it and I'm a hundred percent confident you can check out these two videos and become your own data guy. <laughs>